we will listen to lecturer Dr. Jean Yang Lee. I would like to read her biography. She received her bachelor degree in linguistics from Korea University and earned her doctoral degree in semiotics at the same university. Her doctoral dissertation focused on writing in the age of artificial intelligence and her areas of interest encompasses architectural semiotics and narrative semiotics. She previously served as a lecturer at Konkuk University and currently teaches linguistics and semiotics at Korea University. I leave the floor to lecturer Dr. Jin Yang Lee on the, to make his presentation titled The Divine Space, Aesthetic of Yang Mo Shireen. Sorry for my pronunciation. Is it right, John Myo Shrin, the right uh, pronunciation or not? <laughs> uh, John Myo Shrin is right. <laughs> John Myo Shrin, yes. Uh, okay. Thank Sorry. you for it. Yes. Uh, hello. Today I will introduce John Myo Shrin, one of Korea's religious architecture structures, and give a presentation on the symbolism of John Myo. Uh, Jongmyo is the national shrine where the spirit tablets of the kings of the Joseon dynasty are enshrined and rituals are conducted. Jongmyo may appear very simple at first glance, and one might underestimate its value due to its simple appearance. However, Jongmyo is recognized as a UNESCO World Cultural Heritage. It represents the heritage of humanity. And what could be the hidden secret behind this seemingly plain space? Jungmyo's essence lies in how it reflects the ideology of the eternal nature of the dynasty in the space. Therefore, it is necessary to examine how the symbolism of Jungmyo is manifest in its physical structure. By understanding how the symbolism is reinforced through metaphorical devices in spatial arrangement, we can clarify the meaning of the space. Jongmyo became a symbol of the nation when the Joseon dynasty was established and played a key role in planning the capital city. King Taeju, founder of the Joseon dynasty, started construction of Jongmyo Shrine as soon as he designated Hanyang, today's Seoul, as capital city of the newly founded dynasty. The construction of Jongmyo was completed in 1395. According to Confucian philosophy and the concept of geomancy, Jongmyo, the national shrine, was built on the east side of the royal palace to its left, and Sajik Shrine, where ritual service for the god of art were performed, was built on the west side of the royal palace to its left, its right. Uh, Jongmyo was built in close connection with Confucian beliefs about honoring ancestors. In Confucianism, it is believed that when a person dies, the soul ascends to heaven while the physical body returns to the earth. Therefore, shrines are built to enshrine the soul and tombs are cre created to honor the body. Uh, among these shrines, Jongmyo is specially dedicated to enshrining the spirit tablets of the royal family, the king and queens. The king resides in the palace during their lifetime, and after death, their physical body rests in the royal tomb, while their spirit dwells in Jongmyo. Uh, as more and more kings and queens were enshrined with the passage of time, the facility were necessarily expanded to what you see today. When a king or queen died, mourning at the palace would continue for three years, after the death. 
And after the three years mourning period was over, memorial tablets of the deceased were moved to Jongmyo and enshrined. Uh, Jongmyo is not a burial site, but a place dedicated to ancestor ritual, especially for honoring the spirit. What you see in the picture is the spirit chamber at Jongmyo, where the spirits of the king and queens are enshrined. As you can see, the holes in the tablet serve as symbolic doors for the souls to enter and go out. Jongmyo is not merely a symbolic space. It serves as a functional space where ancestor rituals take place. The division of the entire area of Jongmyo is re related to this functional aspect. Jongmyo Jere is a traditional rite held for worshipping the deceased Joseon monarchs in Jongmyo Shrine. During the Joseon dynasty, the Ritual were held five times a year in Jongmyo Shrine. And currently, a ceremony takes place once a year on the first Sunday of May. The Jongmyo Rite is usually accompanied with the court music playing and dance. We'll take a closer look at the main architecture structures of Jongmyo. Jongjeon is the main hall and most important part of Jongmyo Shrine. In front of this long building stretches a massive elevated stone platform enclosed by walls on all sides. The rough stone yard and imposing magnificent roof shows the sublime beauty of classical architecture. Spirits were believed to enter through the south gate and the king and richer official officials enter through the east gate. Uh, the Jongjeon design is very simple. The roof is not ornate but straightforward and the empty front courtyard make the place the quiet atmosphere. Uh, in this complete calmness there is a mysterious and vibrant energy because it is believed to be the dwelling place of the spirit. When Jongjeon was first built in 1395, it had only seven spirit chambers. Additions and alterations were made over the year until there were 19 spirit chambers, making Jongjeon a very long wooden building. Jongjeon can be seen as a continuously expanding structure akin to a living organism. Unfortunately, with the downfall of the Joseon dynasty, the building remains in its current state. As seen earlier, the interior of Jongjeon contains spirit chambers. Uh, normally, this space is not accessible to the public, but only viewable during the ceremony. Uh, Yongyongjeon is an annexed to the main hall, Jongjeon. It was built in 1421 when Jongjeon could no longer accommodate any more spirit tablets. The name Yongyongjeon means may the ancestors and descendants of the royal family live long in peace. The facilities and layout of Yongyongjeon's are similar to those of Jongjeon, but the building is smaller and more intimate. Like Jongjeon, it has a two-tired elevated stone platform in front. The whole area is enclosed with walls, and three gates were built in the east, south, and west. Uh, Yongyongjeon has six spirit chambers when it was first built, but it was eventually expanded to 16 spirit chambers as we see it today. Uh, there are other buildings for preparing ceremony. For instance, uh, there are places where officials prepare for the rituals and where people guard, clean, and make preparing for the ceremonies. Mm -hmm. There's also a place where the ritual food used in Jongmyo ceremonies are pe prepared. And additionally, there are buildings where musicians who play music during Jongmyo rituals prepare, uh, practice, and wait. 
A place can be changed by various factors such as light, color, sound, temperature, smells, the texture of material used, scale, and more. These elements that introduce modification can be considered factors related to the people, the user, as they influence the experience of the place. When we want to give a place a unique feel and let people see and experience the design, we intentionally use light as a as key element. Uh, light contributes to character and atmosphere of a place and plays a role in regulating activities in the space. For example, uh, spaces designed for contemplations or worship require a different quality of light compared to ordinary places. In Western traditional culture, the concept of light and darkness has developed as a contrasting notion. However, in, East, in the East Asian culture sphere, light and darkness are not set in opposition. Instead, they are viewed as a sharing a common origin, allowing the creation of a dimension that is neither exclusively light or nor exclusively dark. Uh, this perspective can be applied to grammar's semiotic scale, as you can see the slide. In the spirit chambers, there are open spaces known as tekan, with each space is covered by a roof but lacking walls. Although these areas may appear somewhat dark from the outside due to the roofing, they feature a relatively bright ambience compared to the spirit chambers inside. Uh, these tekan spaces serve as a quite transitional area, which is covered by a subtle play of light. Due to the effect of this neither bright nor dark light, the tekan areas become essential locations for intentional ceremony. This space serves as direct intermediaries for communication between gods and humans. Texture in architecture is about how things look and feel. It's both what you see and what you touch. The material used, how they are treated, and the way they used all play a role in creating the feel of a place. For example, when intentionally creating a path, the choice of materials like carved stones, gravel, paving stones, or asphalt can influence the visual and tactile experience of the path. People walk through spaces, filling the buildings with their feet. In Jongmyo, the path called Samdo guide from the main gate to Jangjan and Yongyangjan. And I will provide further explanation about Samdo later. These paths are made of rough stone slabs, making it challenging to walk quickly. The uneven texture of these stones helps control the pace of walking. Jongmyo encourages a slow and careful walking experience. It is very different from everyday paths. It creates a sense of place. The stones are intentionally left unpolished to regulate movement. This rugged natural texture can also symbolize the finite nature of humans uh, in contrast to the enduring nature of Jongmyo. In architecture, scale refers to the relative size, which can be about the size of a building in relation to humans or the size between different buildings. Scale is a significant factor impacting the experience of a place. In experiencing Jungmyo, the scale of the main hall plays a role in making people feel it, feel it is not just a human space, but a divine one. A temple as a home for the divine doesn't meet human physical, physical need or functions. It stands complete and doesn't respond to nearby buildings. What distinguishes Jungmyo architecture from other buildings is its expansion over time horizontally. As the number of ancestor tablets inside the building increase, 
uh, the building expand. Therefore, it has the potential to become an infinite space that expanded horizontally over time. From the perspective of the relative size of the buildings, the difference between Jongjeon and Yongyeongjeon become clear. This creates a distinct feeling when experiencing Jongjeon compared to experiencing Yongyeongjeon. Jongjeon is a consistent planning of the 19th, 19th sectioned roof, while Yongyeongjeon has a center four sectioned roof that is higher with lower roof on the side. Therefore, when looking at Jongjeon head on, its facade doesn't immediately convey its length due to the extended horizontality. In contrast, Yongyeongjeon's roof being divided into three sections allows for a more focused center in the line of sight. So when you look at Yongyeongjeon, it might not feel as visually striking as when you experience Jongjeon. Now let's examine the elements that enhance the sacredness of Jongmyo. In relation to the sacredness of Jongmyo, the symbolic device in architecture is the setting of transitional space. When experiencing the buildings, there's movement involved as people pass from the outside to the inside. Transitions happen everywhere, even by looking at the house doors, which represent a meaningful point of contact between public and private domains. In ancient Egypt, many religious places like temple or sacred areas had entrances in the form of monumental doorways called the propylons. These entrances often look like big doors, and the central area is usually surrounded by walls. This signifies that the static central space is separated from the rest of the world, and one can reach it only through a passage or doorway. Transition creates a buffer zone between one place and another. In architecture, transitions are metaphorically used to represent points of convergence between two different worlds, such as the private and the public area, the real and virtual world, or the world of the living and the world of the dead. In the case of Jongmyo, before individuals can experience this sacred space, they must undergo a ritual in a transitional space to purify their bodies and minds. Before the ceremony, the king avoids sad or happy things for a few days and stays serious in both actions and thought. The king, the king prepare his mind and actions in a separate area. The building, the Osukshi, is where the king and the prince took a bath and waited after arrived at Jungmyo. Another element that enhances the sacredness of Jungmyo comes from its separate separation from ordinary living spaces. Jungmyo is secluded from other places and its architecture is challenging to assess that eye level for humans. Uh, the height of these walls reaches three meter that surpasses any human being. If you look at the building from far out, you can only see the roof and it gives the building a sense of sacredness and, and enclosure. And the cloud pattern on the stone stairs implies a heavenly space. I will now I will now explore the factors contributing to the sense of hierarchy in Jongmyo. Hierarchy is also applied in explaining the differences in the entryway to the central area. The Samdo, the road leading to Jongmyo's main hall, is wide and paved with uneven stones. It is divided into three passes at different heights. The slightly elevated middle pass symbolizes the path used by the spirit. It is called a divine pass. The paths on both sides are for the king and the prince. You can find the sign advising not to walk in the middle of the road, the divine pass. The road ends at the stairs leading to the courtyard, the stone platform, and above 
the stairs, there is a path exclusively for ancestor spirit, indicating it as a sacred space for the god. In other words, in the presence of the god, the king is just merely one human. By allowing only the spirit to continue beyond the courtyard, a cess for human is blocked. It is easy to perceive that the courtyard is a sacred space with a higher hierarchy than other areas. The doors leading to Zhongzhen varied in size and shape depending on who used them. The south gate, also known as the God Gate, is the largest among the doors leading to Zhongzhen and it is used for the entry of ancestor spirit. Following that, the east gate used by the king is the next in size, while the west gate used by the official is the smallest. Uh, I draw a circle in yellow. The perspective will be quite different when entering through the east gate, the king gate, the king's gate. Uh, let's see how the eternal nature of the dynasty is symbolized. The frontal facade of Zhangzhen is of such a scale that its powerful horizontal alignment is not immediately, immediately apparent at a glance. The repetitive array of numerous columns serve as the horizontal architectural element of Zhangzhen. This Extension of horizontal alignment and the repetition of columns symbolize the eternal prosperity of the Joseon dynasty. The simplicity and straightforward architecture form highlight this effect. It's an architecture that excluded vibrant colors or architectural tricks. Looking Jongjeon, you might looking at Jongjeon, you might not notice its horizontal layout right away. But when you do, it gives a surprisingly surprising visual effect. The experience of Zhongzhen and Yongyangzhen is unique because you first encounter the building through the east gate, not the south gate. As mentioned earlier, the south gate is for the god. This perspective from the side with the endless repetition of columns create a profound and infinite sense of depth. Uh, the endless laws of columns are meant to wish the prosperity of Joseon dynasty and eternity of the king. Instead of choosing fancy colors and complex architectural design, they chose simple color and straightforward design to add on to flow of the buildings. The red columns seemingly connected with the ceiling. These horizontal layout and depths are key features in expressing the ideology of Zhongmyo. They emphasize the lasting and immortal nature of the dynasty through these qualities. The architecture, architecture style of Zhongzhen is extremely simple and modest. As you can see in the picture, the Dancheng of the main palace, Gyeongbokgung, is very colorful and elaborate. Dancheng refers to the decorative coloring on wooden buildings. However, when you look at Zhongzhen, the wood is simply coated without the elaborate colors you find in Dancheng. Even the eaves are made in a simple, single layered style. The absolute authority of the monarchy is expressed through the hierarchy nature of space, the imperceptible horizontality of the space, and the infinite repetition of architectural elements. All of these are grounded in restrained simplicity. Zhongmyo is composed of only a huge subsidiary building necessary for conducting rituals, and their compositions and arrangement are very straightforward. Zhongmyo is a sacred space where rituals are conducted. It should emphasize a more dignified and respectful atmosphere rather than everyday familiarity. Therefore, by excluding all extravagance and decoration and focusing only on essential elements, it achieves the dignity of Confucianism. 
Uh, anyone who hasn't been to Zongmyo, I hope you get a chance to visit someday. Uh, thank you for listening to the presentation. Thank you.